irritated for a lot of couple reasons. I had a dream last night that I had a dream that I was asleep. Like I have like very vivid dreams and I have dreams and a dream and a dream and I just get stuck in this dream world. But I was dreaming that I was dreaming about someone attacking me and he was it felt like he was going to rape me but he didn't and he wasn't it just made me feel that way oh by the way in your dreams pay attention to how you feel more than the acts because your dreams are mostly about the feeling not the act that's being done so i again i know that so i know that he's not going to rape me it's just the feeling of being powerless the feeling of not being in control is the feeling that I had, not actually being scared of being raped. But he wasn't even trying to rape me. It just felt like it was a, a dark figure, like a man on top of me. But not like a dark figure, like a demon. It felt like just like a man in our dark clothes is not supposed to be there. And he was trying to get on top of me. And I was trying to get up, but I couldn't get up. And then I'm like, okay, this is sleep paralysis. I don't feel like fighting for the lighting right now. But I'm like, oh, so this is clearly sleep paralysis. So this is just what I'm going through. Now I'm in the dream knowing that I'm dreaming about sleep paralysis, but I don't know that I'm in a dream. I just know that I'm dreaming. So this is whatever. So um, the, the figure is trying to overtake me and I'm trying to move, but I can't. And I'm like, yo, you can't move because you're dreaming. So you have to get up from your dream. So I wake up from my dream and I continue my day. In my dream, I wake up from my dream and I'm continuing my day and I'm trying to figure out why I was dreaming about this man attacking me because I know no man's going to attack me and I know it's a figure of speech. And then um, I can't remember the rest of the dream, but I remember throughout the dream, I was on a journey trying to figure something out. And then so if I dreamed about someone trying to harm me, and then the rest of the dream is me trying to figure it out. It's like, okay, well, what does it mean? I forgot what it means. I looked it up. Dreaming. Hold on. Because I'm clearly holding this with my hand, right? I'm not editing that. <laughs> Dreaming of holding you down reflects your fears, insecurities, and self-doubt. Yeah, that makes sense. And then it goes back to me dreaming about oh i was about to say that about being held down like the man raping me but i'm trying i'm on a journey to figure out my fears and insecurities and self-doubts that's what the dream meant i dreamed about someone holding me down and the fact that i was having sleep paralysis and i was trying to get up and i couldn't just signify to me like how strong the force is and while I'm there's a man that stalks me over there so I'm always looking to make sure if he's looking at me through the window and I'll be catching him sometimes but while I'm fighting to figure out why I'm being held down oh no the, the strength is so like the man was so powerful that I couldn't like overtake it and it wasn't a man. I want to make that clear because it was like a masculine presence. And why I'm making it clear that it wasn't a man is that the energy is masculine and feminine. So like my mother, is, what, she doesn't appear to me as a woman in my dream. She appeared to me as a man or masculine energy because she is very dominant and masculine. So there's feminine energy, there's masculine energy. It's not really man or woman. They, them, they're, her. None of that is like actual. It's feminine energy or masculine energy. So a uh, man can have more feminine energy than masculine energy. And then that's where we go down a line of them, they, her, she, whatever. It's another story for another day. But the dream was more of a masculine energy. So it's making me feel like if you think of a masculine, just like I said, you think of a man. You think of somebody who's 6'2", you know, football player type of build or whatever. You think of strong. You think of power. So this force was trying to hold me down and I was trying to get up and it was like really powerful and this whole rest of the dream I'm trying to overcome this power try to figure out what it was but no one is stronger than me so it's me who's holding me down because the 
strongest, scariest person I ever met was my mother and Muffin. And I'm not scared of neither one of them, like not even a little bit. So what's stronger than my mother and Muffin? Who's more powerful than Muffin and my mother? Me. God, of course, but me. So I'm holding myself down. And then it makes sense. My fears and my insecurities. But then that goes back to why I'm so upset. I bought this dress a week ago. Two weeks ago. And I don't have that many clothes. Because I just don't. And I lost all of my stuff in storage. So I have to rebuild. And my children lost their stuff in storage. So they have to rebuild. So I focus more on making sure the children are okay than me. So I was just like, this is an $8 dress and I have nothing wrong, nothing against $8 dresses. But at my big age and all the accomplishments I have in my life, all the accomplishments I've done, the degrees I worked towards, I didn't finish, I finished one. But all the, the, the education I have, all of the, everything that I worked so hard for everything that's in me even if I was working at Burger King like I can make enough money working at Burger King to invest and to make this happen like all of that that's me it's just been taken away from me and I feel like I was raped of life like when I had to go through what my family put me through it felt like another version of me being raped so although no one hurted my vagina, it you hurt my soul, you hurt me, my my essence, and who I am. So I have to regain that strength, just like a, a rape victim. Unfortunately for me, I was physically assaulted before, so I know what that feels like. So I have to emotionally, mentally deal with that. And then my dreams have been like really heavy the past few weeks. And that's another reason why I started recording. And this is the reason why I've, I've been so vulnerable because I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? And he's just I like, tell them what you're going through. Tell them. He's just I like, put on that dress and make it look good. And I'm like, but I think I already recorded that dress. He was like, record again. You keep recording that same dress until i get you out of this and i'm like god when you gonna put get me out of this when you get yourself out of it when you stop being scared of yourself because i don't care about anyone making fun of me saying didn't she wear that dress already yes can you send me another eight dollars so i can have two eight dollar dresses like that doesn't bother me and it's not that i don't have the money i don't have the right space to like i'm not in the right space to even I'm just not in the right space. I'm just not there. And then every day I, I get dressed and I try and I keep trying and I called my best friend whenever the last time I spoke to her and I called her crying and I was telling her that I'm having a hard time moving forward with life and that everything goes back to being raped. She was like, how? So I started telling her, like, first of all, I've been, I was introduced to sex that I can remember when I was four. So that's why I don't like having sex because I've been having sex since I was four. So it's just like, at my age, I kind of like, I've done it already. Like, I'm not, this, you know? So I called her telling her that, you know, my therapist was telling me that I'm still in a victim standpoint, which I understand because I'm scared to be outside. I have PTSD um, and I have severe PTSD, which is you get from childhood abuse, like being raped your whole life and abused and molested and all that stuff, like would cause you to be severely traumatized. So I'm trying to tell her that and... I had mentioned something about my wig. I had mentioned something about having a hard time like learning how to, I really don't want to change my camera right now. But I see how horrible this is. So um, I'm telling her I'm having a hard time dealing with like 
coming into the woman physically i mean like on the outside that i feel on the inside like trying to show like oh my makeup my hair i'm having a hard time adjusting you know i keep playing with this then my eyebrows are darker than my hair and i'm trying to learn how to lighten them but i can't figure it out and i'm like nobody helped me they like give me half-assed advice like i asked this chick um this girl that i went to middle school with I don't know her personally, but she's really pretty and she seems so confident in herself and she doesn't seem like one of those women that like talk shit about people. So at my big age, I inboxed her, I said, girl, just tell me what I need to do with this makeup. Um, and then she complimented me like, you're already beautiful already, but if this is what you want to do. So I was like, I like how she did that because I never wore makeup because I always felt confident in myself without wearing makeup. Like, I don't need makeup. I'm pretty. And I love freckles. I have my freckles and I love my freckles and if I wear makeup you can't see my freckles so why would I cover my freckles you know um so I would just get my eyebrows done get my hair and my nails done wear lip gloss lipstick and that was makeup to me so she tells me what to do and she tells me everything again and I go and I spend $120 and I'm buying all this makeup from Sephora and all this other stuff right and it's not working right and I'm like why is it not working right so I don't want to go to her and ask her again because again we're not friends we just like DM each other like hey you cute I'd be cute whatever you know and then when I go do the research they're like oh well you need powder and you need um, you need you need powder and you need some type of lotion to put on your face I forgot what it's called right now like primer she didn't tell me that Why wouldn't you tell me that? Now, I'm not blaming her. I don't have anything against her. And quite as kept, I still might hire her to do my makeup. Um, but my whole point is that I didn't know that. And I feel like people would just give me half of the story. Just say, listen, first put the primer on your face. Because if you don't put the primer on your face, then your skin is going to drink that makeup and you're going to break out. But she didn't tell me that. She just told me half a story. So I was saying, like, I feel like people don't give me the full story. And again, it's no shade to her. I just don't understand why I can't get the full, complete steps from people. I guess people all automatically assume, like, oh, she probably know this. So she probably thinking that. So this is what I'm thinking that the shorty was thinking, like, oh, she probably know to use primer because everybody know to use primer. No, I don't. I don't fucking know that you put primer on first. Yes, I'm almost 40, but I have the mindset of a fucking 18-year-old when it comes to social skills. Another video for another day, but I am autistic. I'm autistic. I'm just a fucking genius. Very smart. I'm a brilliant autistic person. Some people understand that that's possible. The rest just, just disregard me. So I'm trying to explain it to my best friend, and I, and I was telling her that my therapist was saying it all starts from being raped um, and abused. And then my best friend starts arguing with me and telling me how I don't ask the right questions and just shaming me. So I hung up. I don't argue with nobody on my phone. That's the stupidest shit you can do is let somebody be on your phone arguing telling you. I don't give a fuck. But I ain't been right since then. Because I, I constantly feel attacked when I'm just trying to ask for help. I'm constantly being attacked when I'm just trying to say what I'm going through. Why is it that I'm telling everyone I've been raped since I was four. My father's best friend, Kenny, was the one who touched me when I was four. And I didn't know that. I just told my dad I have flashbacks and I remember this house and I remember this. And my dad was like, look, it was your uncle or it was Kenny. And I said, well, I remember my uncle and I remember my uncle friends, my uncle friend. He said, well, that's Kenny. I was like, okay, well, that was Kenny. I don't know it was Kenny, but all I know was that in this house, in these days, in these circumstances, my father understood everything that I said, and I was four or five. Okay, this happened. I told my father when I was 28 that I was having flashbacks of what happened when I was four or five. I didn't know how old I was. I said, I remember these things, and I'm having these nightmares, and I'm having these dreams. And what happened, I'm all over the place, but one day I was at a family barbecue, and... I was at a family barbecue and I was scrolling on Facebook and I saw a picture of my dad with these guys and I saw one guy and it next thing you know I just start feeling like hives 
but in the inside of my body and then my lips start swelling and then I start getting real hot sweaty and then I just wanted to pull my hair out and everything started getting hot and I was sitting next to my husband at the time and I told him I said um that's the man who wrecked me and he said huh and I said I have to go and I got up and left while we was in the fucking basement kicking it with his uncles and everybody laughing I was like I gotta go and I got up and I went outside and it just started. That's where I started remembering all the things that happened. And, but from whatever age to 28, I knew something happened to me and I knew I was hurt, but I just can't remember. I didn't remember four. I remember the older ages. I remember being raped, molested, assaulted, whatever the words are called, middle school, high school. But I didn't remember when I was a little girl. And I remember thing when I saw that man picture. So when a few weeks went by, I was having two anxiety attacks a day. I didn't know they was anxiety attacks, but for seven days straight, I would shake and shiver and have nightmares and, and not nightmares, but like visions that felt like nightmares while I was awake. And I didn't know what that was. And for a week straight that happened and then eventually I called a right rape crisis line and I was telling them what was happening and they was like yes yeah, so the repressed memories are coming back you repress those memories so you have to go to therapy and healing to start to find out what happened to you so I tell my father and he told me it was his brother I mean, his not his brother his brother did not touch me it was his best friend and he was like this is the only person who could have done it and it's just like I'm constantly saying this and like nobody's doing anything about it like he's still friends with that man there's more instances of him being around that man after that and more pictures um, and it's like wh why aren't we doing anything and then he said oh because you were young and you know and he made excuses and it's just like damn okay so it's my fault it's not my fault but this is what's inside of me and then I go try to talk to my best friend about how I feel like everybody's just short hand stick. Give me the short end of the stick. Whatever that fucking phrase is that I can't articulate right now. She attacks me and I'm like, you fucking raggedy bitch. You know what it's like to be attacked. And here I am still, you know, fucking 40 trying to figure out how to be a, a teenage girl. How to figure out how to be a 20 year old girl because I never got to be any of these things. Now... I study psychology so psychology would tell you that I have arrested development and that I stopped growing at the age of 12 but before the age of 12 I was already molested and raped so I already have that trauma so I have to go from 12 years old to 40 and I have to go through those developmental stages and it's fucking embarrassing at my age but luckily I look young so it's not that bad but it feels bad to me more than it looks bad but my point is that I'm growing, I'm going, I'm growing through something and I just don't feel supported. I feel so fucking like, I just feel like everybody wants to talk about me. And then so all of the shit that people say, it stays in my head. So now the fact that I'm wearing this dress doesn't bother me as much as the thought of, oh, I have to go on camera again with this dress. And I'm like, damn, these people saw me in this dress already. And I'm worried about stuff that I don't care about because I will wear this dress every day for the rest of my fucking life. As long as I can shower two or three times a day, I still would be fine with wearing whatever. It's just the point that I don't feel supported. And the more, the stronger I get and the more education I get, the more people are just like, they like just disperse away from me. And it's like, I'm just trying to heal myself and I don't know what is going on. I want to know what arrested development is. And I want to know the process and I want to understand all of these things and I'm just being attacked. So how am I supposed to not feel like I'm being raped when it, that's all I know? I've been having sex since I was four. Four year olds don't have sex. So what does that what what does that mean? That means I've been abused and manipulated since that I can remember since I was four. I'm fucking 37 years old. I'll be 38 in a few months. I'm fucking 40 years old. And from 4 to 33, 
my life has been filled with trauma, traumatic experience. At 33 is when I realized what was going on and I put a halt to it. From 33 to 37, it's been me fighting to save my fucking life. So of course I'm gonna have dreams about me feeling like I'm being raped because I still feel like I'm being raped. My best friend just raped me by just not listening to what I'm saying and invalidating what I'm saying and attacking me while I'm asking you for help. You just fucking assaulted me, my best friend. And it hurts because I already lost my mother, I lost my father, I lost my siblings. And when I say lost them, like they didn't die, I didn't lose them. God took them away from me. They were, He removed them from me because it wasn't what's best for me. I don't know if he's removing my best friend, but I have God best friend and my little situation shit boo I keep talking about. He's gone because I stood up for myself and he doesn't like the fact that I'm a strong woman. And it's like, God, can you stop putting people like this in my life? I'm trying to take accountability for me and say, oh, maybe you're attracting the wrong people, which clearly is. So I just don't want to attract people. I just rather be by myself. I don't want to date. I don't want to have sex. I don't want any friends. I don't want anyone to give me half ass story because they assume that I know or because they don't want to help me grow. I don't want to be attacked when I'm trying to tell you what I'm feeling. I want you to take accountability and realize like, damn. I was wrong. I should apologize. I haven't met anyone other than teeny tiny baby sister who takes accountability. I, I literally cussed her out and said, don't fucking keep calling me, telling me about this nigga and whatever. And she was all like, but I'm sad. And I was like, I know. She was like, okay, but I'm trying. And I was like, okay, well, let's try. And she was like, I'm sorry that I keep calling you about him. And I was like, it's not him. I was like, it's just, you know, and then she took accountability and she respected the fact that I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I can't hear his fucking name anymore. I'm done with him. She's like, I respect that, so I'm going to call you about something else. She didn't shut me down. And she stood up for herself while she was crying and said, stop fucking yelling at me. I'm sad. And I'm like, I'm sorry. She's like, I'm sorry. And she has accountability. And I love her because that's the only person that's ever been accountable and to me or held me accountable. Everyone else just disrespects me. And it's like... I keep going on and on and I keep wanting to stop and just like fuck this video because I make a lot of videos that I don't share. Ooh. I feel like I made that truck come by so I can take a break. Guys like calm down. I make a lot of videos and I I don't post them I do video diaries to myself and it makes me feel good and God told me like to stop doing that and to share these videos now so excuse me I'm 100% positive that I'm gonna share this video and I'm not gonna edit it like I might throw the cover and the end on it but that's literally all y'all gonna get out of me but I'm like nervous about sharing this video. Again, this video is made before, this is on the 20th, before my even first video hits. So I don't know the type of reactions I'm getting right now. I don't know if I'm getting haters. I don't know if, I don't know if um, I'm getting haters. I don't know if, I'm not like, I might not have any fucking views by now and I'm just sitting here pouring out my fucking heart thinking it's reaching hundreds of people or thousands of people or whatever God intends for me and I'm just I hope I didn't muffle when y'all heard that because I'm not gonna repeat it I just hope that this message is touching someone whenever it has to because God is telling me just keep recording and just keep going and just keep rambling because your ramble have power in it my rambles have power in it. He keeps telling me that. But, y'all, I'm a mess. I need a hug. I need a fucking hug. I'm trying to be strong and I'm trying to be a life coach so I can tell people how to have my strength. And sometimes to have my strength, you have to know that sometimes you're not going to feel strong. You're going to feel weak. You're going to feel powerful. But I promise you, 
in a few hours or maybe tomorrow or in a few days or whenever god takes this fucking weight off of my shoulders i'll feel better you know you have ups you have downs you have lows you have highs but i keep like what's that song this chick i can't remember the song she says i'm not lonely i'm alone i wish i could think of that song right now because it's a beautiful beautiful poem but i'm not lonely but i feel like maybe i am lonely because i just need like even if it was just my sister i just need something here to not feel so alone i need someone who says like man i've been through what you're going through come here give me a hug i can already see what you need let's go to the beach like look at me and just know what i need i don't need you to fucking attack me well i'm crying about being raped at four you know like what the fuck oh. i'm still healing healing is a journey not a destination there is no place that says oh i'm healed i'm just gonna go to where all the healed people are no healing is a fucking journey and it's like sometimes you gotta cross rivers with calm streams sometimes the river gets rough sometimes the mountain gets rough sometimes you're by yourself and you can be on a boat full of people who be like yeah we gonna heal and some people be like yo i can't do this no more and they jump off the boat some people don't understand, so they fucking rattle your boat like my best friend. Some people abandon you because they're scared like my situation skip. Ship. Oh, I called him a ship. A situation skip. Which is my father's name, by the way. He skip around on his children and, and women like his name is. He skips. He is a skipper. And he skips on women. And he has kids with all these women. And he skips out on his kids. But what I was trying to say with my situationship skipped out on me because he was fearful of my strength. Shows all the signs of a man fearful of abandonment issues. He'll be back. Best friend will be back. And if they don't, I will post another video saying how that they're not back and I'm sad and I have to cry and get over it. Then there'll be a video about how I learned to heal to get over best friend and how I learned to heal to get over the love of your life. My second therapist taught me how to express how I feel. He didn't teach me what to do with those feelings. But, so when I feel this way, I would say, I feel sad, I feel overwhelmed, I feel unappreciated, I feel neglected. Oh, my mental pop war. I feel unsupported, I feel I feel like my daughter distracted me and I can't be vulnerable and weak in front of the children so I have to pull myself together and act like I'm okay so I can switch back into mom mode and go finish doing back to school shopping in my $8 dress while I go spend all this money on them so that way they don't go to school in an $8 dress which is nothing wrong with an $8 dress because if we go to Target and we find some cute $8 dresses, Shorty's going to be wearing it but y'all get my point. Um, thank you. I hope this helped and if it didn't then shit it helped me. I love you. Goodbye.